Welcome back, everyone. Wait, look, it's me, the dragon version. That's JMA. <laughs> the official art is complete. I hope you all enjoy the final product and definitely go check out the artist, Ziphiosaur's other stuff linked in the description. It's so good. Okay, now let's get into what is probably the most hypothetical question I have ever answered on this channel. If every tribe in Wings of Fire went to war, who would win? First, let's set a few ground rules. Number one, no animus magic allowed, because if we did have animus magic, this entire question would just come down to which tribe has the most clever and quickest thinking animus, and, and that's it. They, they would just win, but that's so boring, so it's not allowed. No animus magic in this video. Number two, we are going to assume this war is happening at a random point like 200 years after the end of Arc 3. This is so that we aren't unduly biased by any... <clears throat> existing characters, and so that the tribes which have recently undergone some hardships have time to recover. Okay, let's get into it. Since you know we love tier lists around here, I'm making it a tier list, but this, I, I think, will actually be the first tier list that is only my opinions? Whoa, this is different. I have so much power here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right, kicking it off with the mud wings. I love them, but they're not that strong. By and large, they're just normal dragons with maybe a little bit of extra resilience, but even that is probably restricted to the big wings of each sibling group. They can only breathe fire sometimes, and the only special ability they have is flame-resistant scales, which are rare and also only actually useful against three other tribes. So, all things considered, they might do all right. I'm putting them at the bottom of decent fight because I think they're stronger than the other tribes which will be lower than that but not by much <laughs> and on that note we have the sea wings so in addition to their place on the tier list the sea wings also get put in a special category called won't lose because worst case scenario, they just go back to the Deep Palace where they are untouchable by any of the other tribes, but this tier list is not about who won't lose a war, it's about who would win it. And the Sea Wings are not that tribe. You're not that guy, pal, trust me. Their special abilities are entirely suited to life at sea, but most of the fighting in this hypothetical question would happen on land. They're not horrible at doing that, but mostly they're just your standard dragon when they're not around water, so I think they would be unlikely to win. Now, on to the Rainwings, easily one of, if not the strongest pick on this list. There is a reason to we made them all a bunch of lazy pacifists in the main arc, and that is because if any of them had wanted to, they could have easily been some of the most dangerous warriors on the continent. If they joined in on the Sandwing Succession War, whichever side they joined would have won, Nightwing interference or not. The ability to blend in perfectly with their surroundings, combined with their ability to attack at range, is such a strong combination, it's almost unbeatable. And to make matters even worse, a single attack from their magic despot is, best case scenario, crippling. Worst case scenario, an incredibly painful way to die. If the Rainwings wanted to take over, the only thing that could stop them would be Animus Magic. They get into top tier without any trouble at all. And with that said, here is the one tribe that might have a chance at stopping the Rainwings, the Nightwings. Their combination of mind reading powers and prophecy would make them a lot harder to sneak up on. It would also really help them decide when and where to engage their enemies. Part of me wants to say that it would only take a single Nightwing with prophecy powers half as strong as clear sights to win the war, but the other part of me says that the Nightwings weren't exactly winning the war in Darkstalker Legends, so maybe not. In any case, I'm putting them at the tippy top of strong chance. The only thing really holding them back from being top tier is that they don't have super strong offensive capabilities like some of the other tribes on this list. The Sandwings, for example, have venomous tails which are almost guaranteed to kill a dragon if they connect. It's only a matter of time unless that dragon can somehow find the antidote cactus. Now, given that this cactus only grows in the desert which the Sandwings control, and that they could probably go around getting rid of most of the cacti that grow in the desert, their tails quickly become one of the stronger weapons on this list. Aside from that, however, the Sandwings are pretty standard dragons, though perhaps a little more uh, resourceful than others, so because of their tails, I'm going to put them in the strong chance category, but not at the top. In fact, at the bottom, and just above them, I'm putting the Ice Wings. Why am I doing this? Well, because much like the Rain Wings, the primary Ice Wing attack, Ice Breath, is 
debilitating at best, and instant death if it lands a direct hit. Furthermore, like the Sea Wings, their area of residence is almost unassailable for other tribes, even without the ice wall. It's so cold where they live that other tribes have trouble existing in the tundra for more than short periods of time. Unlike the Sea Wings, however, the Ice Wing abilities are still useful outside of their home turf. I don't think it's quite as strong as being able to see the future or read minds, but it's definitely up there, so I'm putting them in between Night Wings and Sand Wings in strong chance. Next up are the Sky Wings, jacks of all trades, masters of none. Well, except flying kind of fast, I, I guess they're the masters of that. But otherwise, most Sky Wings really don't do anything special. Now, Here's where it's hard to rate them, because some Sky Wings are incredibly powerful. The Flame Scales. A single Flame Scale is worth 10, 20, maybe even 100 dragons. They are all but immune to most attacks you can throw at them. I mean, Peril takes a Dragon Flame Cactus Explosion at point blank range in Book 8 and is mildly inconvenienced by it. This is the same bomb that outright killed two dragons in book six, and it's barely even a plot point for our favorite flame scale. The only reasonable counter I can see to them would be maybe Rainwing Venom? I'm not sure the flame scales could evaporate it all before it did damage, or like maybe a dedicated team of ice wings could neutralize a flame scale, but that's such a stretch. The only problem is that flame scales are really rare, and sky wings have a habit of killing them as soon as they're born. So I think an army of flame scales would probably be the strongest possible army with the constraints we have here, but I also don't think there's ever going to be than like maybe two alive at a time, so I'm putting the Skywings at the top of decent fight, if for no other reason than because they are so dependent on their flame skills to actually be competitive. And that just about wraps it up for the Pyrian tribes. Moving over onto Pantala, we start with the Silkwings. Yeah, the Silkwings are not winning. <laughs> not only do the vast majority of them have zero weaponry besides teeth and claws, they can't even fly or, or practice flying for the first six years of their life. Now, their flame silks are strong, that is true, but they're just so rare. In Arc 3, it took the hive wings like a half century of literal flame silk breeding programs to make 12 of them. All things considered, there's just no chance for the silk wings to win. And speaking of the hive wings, they are an interesting and difficult tribe to place because they have so much variety in their powers. Some of them have deadly venom, similar to the sand wings. Some of them can shoot acid similar to the rain wings, but others have the ability to smell bad or simply no ability at all. I think since none of their powers seem overly strong and since their best weapons are done just as well or maybe even better by every member of other tribes, I'm going to stick them in the strong fight category. Definitely a competitive tribe, but I think others are objectively better. Then we have the leaf wings. Okay, so to start with, we have to place them below the hive wings just based on historical information, but they aren't that much lower. In fact, I'd argue that in their element, like in the poison jungle, they are even stronger than the rain wings. A single single leaf wing with strong enough leaf speak could solo entire armies in the right situation. The problem is that the right situation is very limited to where trees have grown, and as the high wings have demonstrated, it is entirely possible for dragons to clear cut an entire continent if they want to. And our final tribe, not really dragons, but <laughs> we gotta include them, scavengers. They <laughs> get at the bottom of everything. In the real world, our biggest strengths as humans are our intelligence, and our opposable thumbs. Dragons have both of these things, as well as being much larger than us with scales that are much harder to damage than any of our armor and innate weaponry like fire breathing or magic despot. So yeah, humans are just kind of worse in every way. The only thing they really have going for them is that they can hide in places dragons can't get to, but that's pretty much it. So those are my thoughts on who would win a war. My money would be on the rain wings, but I definitely think there are some other strong contenders in the fight. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching.